These days, there are a heck of a lot of turtles out there. And I'm not even talking about the clones. I'm talking actual Seiko turtles. You of course got your regular classic turtles, then the upgraded King Turtles, the more premium Willards. If you happen to live in Japan, there's always the smaller Mini Turtles. And then you have this, the SPB-313, one of Seiko's newest additions to the aquarium, one of the new Slim Turtles, which actually may be the best turtles out there, as it seems to combine the classic design of the regular turtles with premium features of the Willard, and all in a case that's actually smaller than the Minis. If that sounds confusing, don't worry, it kind of is, and that's why I actually bought one just so I could investigate this all for myself. And for better or worse, this is going to be a typical Seiko story. And like all stories, we do have to start at the beginning, which means specs. These so-called slim turtles come in at a width of 41mm, with a lug to lug of 47. They're also relatively thin at 12.3mm, thin at least for an ISO rated diver with a screwed down crown. You're also looking at a 20mm lug width, about 150 grams on its bracelet, give or take a link or two, and a flat sapphire crystal with AR. All of which is powered by Seiko's 6R30 movement and protected with Seiko's die shield scratch resistant coating. Seems fairly standard, but where things get interesting is when you compare this with the regular turtle as well as the mini turtle. To the regular turtle, it really is a slimmer version, both in width and thickness as the regular turtle is 45mm wide, and it's actually 1mm taller than the slim. Although, curiously here, the lug to lug is about the same. Which is not true with the pre-existing mini turtles, as the mini turtle is a 42mm watch with an extremely short lug to lug of 43. It's actually a bit squarish despite its roundish profile. So comparatively, on the wrist the slim version exists kind of somewhere between those two. Now, the regular turtle is amazingly comfortable for its size. It's really something when you first put it on. But it is still a larger watch, and the new Slim Turtles are much easier and much more comfortable to wear all day. However, because it keeps that same 47mm lug to lug, I think it actually wears a little larger than the 42mm Mini with its shorter lug to lug. Either way, it's really comfortable on the wrist, and I think it is one of the most comfortable turtles ever especially since it keeps that tucked in crown at the standard Seiko 415-ish position, rather than the minis sticking right out of the three. And the new version does all of this while still maintaining that Thule turtle presence, which is all thanks to it maintaining that distinct case shape, where it's smooth, brushed, and looks like its namesake. Honestly, there's not much else to talk about here with the case except that the drilled lugs are nice, the crown is unsigned, as usual. And since this is in the Pro Spec line, it does have that die shield coating to keep the shell looking tubular. Now I should point out that this isn't an entirely new design, but rather a reissue of a really old one, which I think is the 6105-8000. And the hardcore Seiko fans out there, please correct me if I'm wrong here, but I believe that watch is actually the second diver in their history after the 62 Moss, and exists as kind of a prelude to the Willard. So the history here runs deep, as does the turtle roots with Seiko. And while this is a typical turtle case, which a lot of people love, I do have to point out that if you compare this case to other Seiko watches in its price range, like say the 62 Moss or the Marine Master Reduced, you see that the turtle is a little less refined than those. And I start to wonder, what exactly am I paying for here? But with Seiko, it just is what it is here. As for the bezel, again, it's a typical Seiko, which means it's not the best out there, but it's also not that bad either. Here it has a simple black aluminum insert, again, Seiko, with a coin edge that's just tall enough to easily get a good grip on it when you want to turn it. And you can say the same about the crown as well. Plus the action here is decent. Like I said, it's a Seiko. I'm not sure how many colorways exist of this new Slim Turtle, but this is the one that really stood out to me. This white dial that just looks so clean and sharp, I had to see it in person. The dial is a semi-gloss polar white, which extends out to the blocky indices. Like a lot of recent Seikos, I don't think these indices are applied, but they do rise out of the dial, 
and they're made up with a polished silver frame and interestingly this light bluish looking luminous paint whereas the hands themselves are using more of a traditional white loom the light blue indices are interesting and really a great choice against this polar white dial it looks great next to the black painted chapter ring and i think adds more contrast as well as some visually interesting elements to it all while keeping that clean and sharp look of a polar dial and i know in a lot of these shots the hands look black but they're not that's just how my studio is set up here the hands are polished so they're just going to reflect whatever's around them now one interesting difference between the slim and every other turtle out there is that there's no raised chapter ring instead it's just painted on in black at the very outer edge which is perhaps one less thing for seiko to screw up but more importantly, it makes the dial look a little bit bigger in proportion to the rest of its brothers. Some love this and some don't. Everyone just has their own preference. In some ways, you could even say that about the date as well. Yes, there is a date here. Just in case you didn't notice this goofy porthole down at the 430. It's small, practically impossible to read while wearing it, and there's just no real point to it. I can almost imagine that the initial dial was a dateless design and the designer finished it, brought it up to the higher ups at some sort of meeting and the clueless exec stared at it and just insisted it had to have a date. And after arguing for a while, the designer was just like, fine, here's your stupid date. I'm done with it because I can't think of any other reason why they do this other than just decision by committee. Beyond that, though, it really is just a great design. It's one of those where you can't really say much more about it. It's just straightforward, clean, and striking looking. Yes, it is a turtle, but in a lot of ways, it's an improved turtle, a more comfortable turtle. It's easy to wear, easy to read, with an almost perfect balance between size and presence. So the story so far is that it's a great watch with an amazing design. And this is typical of a Seiko story, but also typical with a Seiko story is that plot twist involving the quality control. I think you know where I'm going with this. Luckily, as I said, there's no chapter ring here for them to screw up, but the bezel, of course, is misaligned. It's off by maybe a degree, but it is still off. However, that's not the worst part. For that, we gotta zoom into the dot. And look right there in the center. You see that brownish smudge looking thing in between the logo and the hands? Yeah. At first, I thought it was something on the crystal, just because looking at it with the naked eye and normal lighting, I couldn't see that at all. So I wiped everything down and redid all of those macro shots. But no, it's real, it's still there. And lastly, let's not forget the bracelet. The bracelet itself is actually really good and one of the best I've seen from Seiko with this very interesting five link design. Although, heck, anything other than a standard oyster is actually interesting. But here, it's not only interesting, but it also has an okay taper, good solid links, solid end links, and a pretty good milled clasp. Now, it's still got the goofy Seiko diver's extension thing that I always forget how to actually open up, and most people forget even exists just because no one actually uses it, but that's not really a big deal. And neither is the fact that the blocky design may be questionable when paired with this Kirby turtle case. What is a big deal though is the fit of the end links, because they are horrible. And maybe even worse than that, because these are so sloppy it's just shameful. And if you remember the Orient Star 1964 version 2, it had the same issue. So I don't know what's up with Japan and their bracelets these days. More to the point, this is just unacceptable at this price, and that's true with all of these issues. I mean, if you're looking at a regular turtle at that price point, yeah, compromises sometimes have to be made. I, I understand that. And even at this price, sometimes there's some compromises. But the issues here shouldn't be among them. And especially when there are so many other options out there at this price, or even less, and they're not making these mistakes. But like I said, this is a typical Seiko story. You know how this goes, you know how this ends, and I don't want to rant on this too much. Everything's pretty much been said before, and especially when there's still the loom to talk about, which is a similar story to my Glacier Marine Master Reduced. 
And again, Seiko is doing something a little bit different here, where the loom it's using in the indices has this light blue teal look to it. But once the lights go out, it's still just as green as the hands. And overall, it's good enough for a diver. It's just disappointing for a Seiko. In my longevity test, it lasted just as long as my Glacier Marine Master reduced. But when compared to a regular turtle, and that's over at the right, it's not quite up to snuff. And to sum up my complaints from the Glacier video, one of Seiko's entry-level divers should not beat one of its more premium divers in any capacity, let alone loom. And it just goes to show you here that with Seiko, just because you're paying more doesn't necessarily mean you're getting more. And that's becoming more and more a problem. However, when it comes to the movement, that statement may be true here. As here, the Slim Turtle is using a 6R30 movement, a nice upgrade over the standard 4R series, which increases the power reserve to around 70 hours. Although, I should point out that not everyone would agree with that. There is some discussion and debate out there. And honestly, it's a much longer conversation. For me though, I've had good experiences with the three 6Rs I've had, and I've yet to have anyone really explain to me why there may be an issue with it, at least from a design or mechanical perspective. If anything, I think the problem here more lies in the fact that Seiko hasn't upgraded the spec accuracy range. I think they say it should be within negative 15 to plus 25, and that's just about the same as it is for regular entry-level 4R movement. Now, 10 years ago, you could get a 6R in an Alpinist or a Sarb for under 400 bucks. And at that point, it was a solid win all around. These days though, if you want a 6R movement, you're looking at more like 800 to 1000 bucks. So I think some people are getting watches that are on the fringe of that range and are immediately disappointed in it for what they paid. And especially considering what you can get out of the Swiss competition these days. Bottom line, I don't really know what the bottom line is here. Like a lot of Seikos these days, this is a tough one to sum up. Seiko is a master at designs, and that's why we love them despite issues. Yet at the same time, just from the mark on the dial and the sloppy end links, this is one I can't really recommend. At least not buying it blindly online. This is one you really should see in person. Although, since it is a Seiko, I know people are going to buy it regardless of what I say here. That despite the misalignment risks or any other random thing that could happen to it, they love the way it looks and they want to try it. And it happens way too often where we wind up getting a Seiko and we're initially disappointed in it. We're frustrated and we tell ourselves that this is the last time. We're not going to let them do this to us again. But after a while, that frustration wanes, and we tell ourselves that no watch is ever perfect. We look at the Seiko we bought, and we learn to love them for the flawed gems they are. And that's kind of how it is with me right now. I've already taken the hit from buying it, and the frustration is starting to wane. So when I look at it, I do like it, despite those flaws. I mean, there's just something about a white dial diver that draws you in, and you can't help but love it. Yet, I also don't really need another diver. And eventually, I know this story is just going to repeat itself with another Seiko. If not with me, then with one of you out there. It's honestly kind of an abusive relationship when you think about it. Anyway, I'm going to have to think about this one, but in the meantime, will the real Slim Turtle please stand up? Let me know what you think about it, as well as what's your favorite turtle. And as always, if you like the video, do something down below. Subscribe, comment, thumbs up, thumbs down, something. It helps the channel. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, and I'll see you next time.